What did that say? Huh? I call this meeting to order. Ouch. Of the Neighborhood Partners Fund Board on today, uh, Tuesday, June 19th, 2018, at 2.05 in the afternoon. Um, moving on to item number two, announcement comply with the compliance with the open meeting law. City Clerk, are we in compliance with the open meeting law? Yes, we are. Could you please proceed with roll call? Yes. Chair Sadecki? Here. Vice Chair Schultz? Present. Member Toussaint? I'm here too. Member Holmes? Present. Member Kerr? Present. Member Kilponen? Present. Member Narado? Here. Member Christensen? Excused. Member Walters? Excused. Member Quinley? Excused. Member Bonaventura? Present. Member Powell? Excused. Member Williams? Uh, present. And you yeah. form. Fantastic. Um, item number three, public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard, give your name for record, the amount of discussion, as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed, or the amount of discussion as well as any time uh, any single speaker is allowed may be limited. Anyone seeking public comment? Seeing none, moving on to item number four, review of additional application information requested by board members. I'll turn it over to staff. Alma, do we have any additional information to be reviewed? No, I just made the changes to the matched hours that were submitted, and um, hopefully they're correct. <laughs> and that's it. I gave you the, a copy of the new spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet was available when everybody signed in? So does anyone yes. not have a copy of the spreadsheet? Any other items for review? Seeing none, we're going to move on to item number five, review of evaluation scores on the Neighborhood Partners Fund Board Grant Program application. Um, so we're going to put the floor for that. I figure we can go through it um, as it's done on the spreadsheet, yes, item, yes, yes, item line by item line. Um, so we'll start with um, application number 18, or item application for 18B, the Las Vegas Arts District. Uh, project name is the Parade Float Project. Applicant request is five thousand. Minimum request of four thousand. Applicant match of sixty-one hundred. Any comments from the board? Please don't forget to introduce yourself before you make a comment. Go for it, Member Williams. Do not raise your hand. Oh, Member Williams. You'll get the hang of it. I'm gonna <laughs> shake my head before I even see it. Member Williams. Um, I know we got 19 applicants and we were going through them one by one. Mm -hmm. However, we got $80,000, we only got $2,411 extra. We got to spend it all. That means we got $2,411 above the $8,000, $80,000 we have to allocate. Suggestion? Oh, I can't make a suggestion. Yeah. However, attorney, um, Terry? Assistant City Attorney Terry Ponticello. In compliance with the agenda item, it says review of evaluation scores of oh. the MPF grant program application. So I, at this point, I would think, of, is there a score. preview of all the, the scores? scores? <laughs> Are there no oh, scores? Yeah. Um, Larry was men mentioning that there, there was, I guess they couldn't score them for some reason. And so I... I had already submitted that when I found out about that, so. so oh, so we, do we need to strike the item? Should we? You can strike the item. If so they weren't able to get scored. Scores. So, so mm -hmm. before we do that, we, we feel like we can motion that discussion. Well, the discussion will follow the actual recommendation. So this is more for the actual review of any scoring that happened, which according to Alma didn't happen in Zoom. Right, because so. I didn't get anybody's scores on the. So I think we only write in Zoom grants, I should say. So, so just just for the record, since my name was mentioned, um, this came up last week, and several members conferred with me, and I also made the same observation. Something changed in the software, which didn't follow the normal process. Those of us that are were here in the past were accustomed to to enter scores, and it immediately took you to entering dollars. Personally, I felt that was okay because the scores wind up generating the dollars or really the subjective judgment generates the dollars. So I felt it was not of a consequence. I did make a formal inquiry to staff yeah. and to our chair to address this issue. Uh, so for the benefit of the other members, but I have not heard back. So for the, let's say 
strike the item. We just need a motion to strike since we can't have short review scores that don't exist. Well, Madam Chair, I would think that these comments are the item. Yeah, okay. good backup information for this agenda item. Uh, understanding that there are no values discussed, there's a reason why. And Vice Chair Schultz's comments about you know how how evaluation or scores take place in the past and not now. Just may want to just keep it on the record. There's no action item on this. Sounds good to me. So then we'll move on to item number six, which is discussion for possible action regarding recommendation of funding for fiscal year 2018-2019 neighborhood partners fund board projects. And this is where Member Williams can make all of the commentary he wants to regarding funding and projects. Yes. <laughs> this is where I was waiting for. I jumped the gun. I apologize. It's okay. To my, my other committee members. So. I was stating, or may I restate, that we had $80,000 to fund. We're over $2,411. And uh, it appears to me that everybody needs to pretty much be funded. Um, I didn't see anybody that was that horrible that should get zero. And given that we need to get all the money out, I had two suggestions, or I want to just kind of throw something out there. First was, um, can be up for discussion is there's 19, there's 13 applicants that ask for the full amount of $5,000. And if you took that extra, if you took that $2,411 divided by the 13 applicants, that would minus them like $185 a piece. The other option, and we can have that for discussion, is there's 19 applicants. If you took the $2,411 minus, uh, divided it, it comes out to about $126 and then everybody gets funded. They can be minus $126 for everyone or $185 for the 13 applicants that ask for $5,000. $185? Huh? $185? These are $5,000 awards or less, right? Right. For everybody that asked for $5,000, so I took the 13 at that applicant that asked for the full amount, which is $5,000, right. and um, divided 13 by $1,000 or by $2,411. That came out to $185 for each one of those applicants. Or I took all 19 applicants, divided 19 by 2,411, which came out to $126.89, and that was subtract $126.89 oh, okay. from each one. applicant. Or if you just do the $5,000 request applicants. That would minus $185. So I don't know if it's even to do everybody at $126 or just the $5,000 applicants by $185. Everybody that we seem to ask could do their projects with a little bit less. And so we're talking $126 or we're talking $185. Okay. Uh, sure. uh, Vice Chair Schultz. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Larry Schultz, Ward 6. So, uh, just a few comments, Member Williams, okay, and response. So, number one, I'm not aware of any legal requirement, unless Council corrects me, for compelling full funding. Just in, any, in other words, to consume all the funding that's been awarded by the city, there's nothing that I believe that compels us to do that. Um, Assistant City Attorney Terry Ponticello, there, there is no mandatory requirement that the entire funding be. Thank you. So Larry Schultz, Ward 6, continuing Vice Chair. So the next thing is, I think that with all the work that all the applicants did to submit packages and make presentations, I think it's appropriate to discuss the merits of each and not just follow a mathematical uh, degradation of what they requested to get to a number. Additionally, I believe, I believe, I'm not sure, that at least one applicant may not be qualified because that applicant is a private entity for profit, but I'm not sure about that, and that needs to be discussed. And then the issue becomes the city of the city funding uh, physical assets, equipment that would go to a private entity, a for-profit private entity, which I don't know what the legal implications are of doing that. So I think that needs to be discussed. So I think there's a lot that needs to get, we need to get into, and that's just my uh, feedback to Member Williams. Member Nerero, did you have any follow-up? Um, Member Nerero, I agree on um, discussing the each each project, but I do also agree with um, Member Williams that it might be, so my suggestion, my compromise, I guess, is can we discuss projects that we personally did not want to fully fund and maybe start there instead of talking about the ones that we all can probably agree on? I'm guessing a lot of the ones that we all felt strongly about, we probably all feel strongly about in fully funding. Um, 
I also just don't agree with reducing some off all 19 because some applicants only want $1,100, and I feel like that's a fair amount to ask compared to someone, you know, them losing $200 around there is a, a bigger impact to their project than someone losing uh, $200 from 5000 There's a couple of projects that I also agree that I don't feel comfortable funding at all, but I'm willing to work with the board on that. So I don't know. My suggestion is to discuss projects that maybe we have issues with or comments or questions or are uncomfortable with. Uh, Member Quayley. Member Quayley. Uh, I'm, I'm new to this, so this is my first time. And just from what my understanding and so forth, what I did is, you know, I went through each each one and I evaluated and I looked at all the information that we had gotten. And first I just kind of, I funded what I would do, what I would give them just off the top of my head, put it into the thing and, you know, see what saw where it was at. And then I went back through where I needed to reduce a little bit based on the individual project. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I can't, I got it up to $79,910, pretty close. Wow, you're good. I think, <laughs> I just, I, I Let's just use your that. <laughs> I agree with that. Um, I mean, this forum was really helpful in doing that on, online. So um, I, th I think I agree that so many of these applicants did a really good job and, and they have some great projects, so. Member Williams, no, I, I agree with all the comments that are made, and I was just throwing out a, a, a starting place, and you know that was just something to start from. So um, with that, um, um, I'm, I'm comfortable with doing any process, but I do want to just note that um, this board was given eighty thousand dollars to give out to this neighborhood or to the community. I don't want to leave anything on the table to give back to the city and it goes back to general funds or it then shows that we don't need as much money to give out to these neighborhoods and to these uh, HOAs and homeowners associations and all of a sudden we're the first thing that's cut or the first thing that's reduced in funding because it's happened before, it happened to the neighborhood, um, the white hat program and now we have having more programs than we can fund and it was because all of a sudden there was a, reduce, a reduction in funds so to me I think it's key that we do provide or get as close as that we can to the $80,000. Member Toussaint, um, I'm, I'm sort of leaning towards my friend Larry over here on this, um, but I'm thinking maybe since those that we want to fully fund are a lot less controversial, what if we go through and try to select the um, uh, fully funded <coughs> groups? And then we can spend time trying to figure out what the rest of them are deserved, because I think there's a lot of them. I suspect we all agree that that issue get full funding. Uh, Chance Bonaventura. Uh, so I'd just like to just uh, suggest that, um, like on the YNAT board, it was very important, uh, not so much at the quality of the grant, but it was that we had youth members on the board that participate. We had youth members who went through the process and used it for school projects and I think that's why we funded the full amount on all of those um, but in this instance where we have adults and we have community associations um, I think it's more important that we go through one by one and judge by quality and if we don't if we don't use the full amount I think that's okay but it just shows that we're looking for more quality next year uh, when people submit the grants. Um, so just by, by, by being more specific and going one by one, selecting them, we're setting precedent for how, what quality we want to see next year and, and set goals for people to meet. And I think if we just um, select ones out and we just uh, do the whole thing, we're not, we're not upholding to that quality. Remember, remember where I agree we can go through it, but I don't want to leave out no money out on the table where we're giving it back to the city. That's just my own opinion on the eighty thousand dollars because it's important that this board utilize all, all the money. I know we're we're over, so if we take money back from people, we take money back from people. But you guys don't understand the impact of giving money back and not being able to fund it if we get quality programs next year and they decide to only give us seventy thousand dollars next year. But anyway, let's go through it so we can move on and, and, and see where we're at. And then we can decide at that point, if you don't mind, Chair. Chair Sandeke, for the record, um, what I'm getting is that everyone is 
invested in being willing to discuss the applications. I feel that if we feel that it should be fully funded um, by Member Tucson's um, idea that things that we feel should and have merit um, to fully fund will not be contentious items and will move more quickly. So I don't feel like going over those will be um, too much hassle or too much headache for the board. Um, it's usually fairly easy to not um, have to worry about con you know, non-contentious items they move fairly quickly. Um, for anything that needs to be discussed in further detail, obviously it's the floor is open for anyone that wants to discuss why they feel a project doesn't have merit or should be funded less or maybe doesn't meet the merit or requirements set forth by the Neighborhood Partner Fund guidelines. Um, obviously I understand Member Williams' um, point regarding not wanting to leave money on the table to go back into the general fund. However, I also understand Member Bon Ventura's point that we are still stewards of the city dollar and if it is worthy of funding in its totality, we will find that money for them. However, there may be reasonable cause that something is not fully fundable. So I want to leave that open and not say that we will or won't fully fund the full $80,000 because it is going to be up to the board to make that determination. So with that said, does anyone else have any commentary about how we're going to handle this? We're going to go through item by item, discuss. If you have a serious contention with anything, please do not hesitate to make your voice known. That's why we are building numbers. Um, other than that, we're just going to go through this one by one via the Excel spreadsheet that Alma has pulled up. And we will start with item application for 18B, the Las Vegas Arts District, which was the parade float project. The applicant request was 5000 the minimum request was 4000 and the applicant match is titled, totaled at 6100 Open. Go for it. Uh, Member Nerero representing Ward 3. Obviously, I'm biased because I am, and I know a lot about this um, neighborhood and this board, but I wanted to say, um, sorry, what? Oh, I was just commenting about, I don't know if it's necessarily biased, you just like, oh. you have a lot of familiarity. Sure. So I have a lot of familiar, familiarity about this um, neighborhood group and project. Um, I will say that some of the things that I consider when thinking about this project is the fact that the Arts District is a, um, a, group, of, a group of neighbors that are fighting a lot of forces in their neighborhood, like you know development and, um, and residential projects coming in and raising rents for artists that are you know trying to survive and, um, and rent studios. So I think it's a great thing to contribute to and to um, increase awareness of the Arts District so that they get more visitors. I know they struggle to get people um, to visit their businesses and their small art galleries, so I think a parade float would be a great way for them to, number one, get their name out there, number two, increase kind of engagement between their neighbors, um, and, um, and also just increase kind of morale in the neighborhood. Um, and I know that floats and parades have a hard time attracting participants, so we should encourage anyone who wants to be in a parade to do it. Member Kilponen, um, I actually thought that the, the project was creative and it, it did fit in with um, uh, the downtown area which does have um, a lot of activities um, and very often that's, that's parade. So it seemed like it, it um, uh, seemed like a good tie-in and it, as I say, something, something different. I, you know, Nice to see, it would be nice to see the creative effort once it's done. Larry Schultz, Ward 6. I agree with my two colleagues, uh, Member Nerero, Member Kilponen. I think we should fund this project the full amount of $5,000. That's your motion? That's my, well, well, I think we no can't really motion. make a motion now because we have to go through every one of them. So unless anybody objects, and I think we may have to sort through this again as we move towards the end, but I think this is just sort of kind mm -hmm. of a build-up. I think usually we do the mo right. We've done the motion at the end where we yeah. recap all this of them. This early discussion yeah. to build it up. Well, I, what I will be doing, I will be entering the amount so as you go, yeah. and then we'll see. And it can be adjusted later Perfect. on. Nothing is done done yeah, until the motion is made. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so right now we're making. Sorry, Member Kirk. Uh, I'm just going to offer my opinion as well. The, they they scored high, which I did not have any trouble scoring. The scoring thing worked for me, so I. I'm not sure the rest of us. Yeah, um, but they scored high for me. So uh, although I did give them 4,500, I would be open to 5,000. So we're going to move forward with finalizing discussion on this item and putting on our spreadsheet $5,000 for the award amount. Is there any objection? It's not a motion. Oh, but it's any still consensus. Consensus. Yes. 
Um, next item is the Arville Oki Neighborhood Watch Association. Project name is Neighborhood Watch Signs Project. Applicant request of $1,170 with a minimum request of $570. An applicant match of $1,200. And the floor is open for discussion on the item. Mr. Ch Vice Chair Schultz. Yes, Larry Schultz, Board 6. This uh, association came in with a very concise, tight budget. There was not really any sort of fluff that was supported. It was well articulated, and the amount is not that great. So my view is to give them uh, the full $1,170. Any further discussion against or for the recommendation? Can we round it off the nearest 100 to make it easier for everybody? Do you want to make it that, do you anybody object to that? $1,200. I don't see any, so I we've only afforded $1,200. Since that matches exactly what they have. Their, their match is Member Member Kilponen, um, is that, are we allowed to do that? I believe we did it last year. You've done it every year I've been. Yes. I've done it before. Do we need a legal opinion? My only caution is using your own discretion to, to do that and setting the precedent. Uh, they request a specific dollar amount, and what are you backing it up? What is it backed up with? Yeah. Yeah. Remember, I suggest that we just go with them out, and if we come down and we're short, and we reduce people, did whatever we want to do, we can go back and we can make it an even number if we find that that we had the money to do it. Okay. Chair Sandecki, you've seen that we are already um, over in the amount of request versus the amount we're available to match. Let's start with what they've actually requested, and should we be able to give them a little extra if it's worthy of merit and we don't run out for other people, we can revisit the item. So I'll make a note on my spreadsheet. Okay. Well, Member Kirk, I was just going to offer it. Uh, I would agree I think we should hold with the amount they asked for because now we're, they have to go find $30 to spend. You know what I mean? It's like it wasn't in the budget, so now they have to go find it. So we sort of forced it on them. It doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. So, Larry Schultz, which is, so I, I don't know what the mechanics are, but to me, from the world I came from, you have to have accountability for, uh, you know, for, the dollars do have to be supported by backup documentation. And again, the, from a presidential perspective, and I wasn't aware that this was done in the past, I think you really have to have backup to what you award. I know $30 is not much money, but again, it's not this instant application. It's really the, app, it's really the application of the concept, potentially other applications. But from but for the city staff folks here, if you guys are comfortable with it, well, I shouldn't say anything. Let, let me go back to that comment. In, when I worked with WINAP, I know we did it for the youth. So I'm just saying in the grant, that general funding grant, we have done it before. That's, that's all I want to say. Well, it's your decision. Based on feelings and based on other recommendations, we'll move forward with matching exactly what they did ask for I'm fine with it. for the application. Should we be able to, if there's leftover, because we haven't been able to fund other things, and this warrants going back and revisiting and giving based on merit because it would match for backup sake the amount that they're able to match applicant wise through their volunteer hours, I believe, then we can revisit that at the end of the, the full discussion of all the applications. So that's it. Well, with everyone, moving on. Beverly Green Neighborhood Association, knowing who we are, the Beverly Green uh, Sign Topper Project. Applicant request is $5,000. Minimum request is $4,000 with an applicant match of $5,005. Any comments from the board? Member Kirk. Uh, Member Kirk, they were one of my highest uh, rated, and reason being is um, I typically look for cash donations, in-kind, and volunteer across the board, and they had all of that. So as a non-HOA, as a neighborhood association, they've gone out of their way to seek that, and I think that, that shows higher in my mindset. So I gave them the full 5000 Is anybody in disagreement or for uh, funding with the full 5000 Member Kilponen, I, I, I thought, I, I have to say, I, I didn't understand initially the reason behind having the number of, of Sign toppers, but under, understanding from their presentation, you know the the fact that they've got these different um, uh, neighborhoods that don't look like they necessarily go together, uh, you know that um, it made it a compelling argument for me. So I I I, I 
fully support this project. Um, I listen, uh, Chair Sandecki, I listened to the audio of this as I was excused from the last meeting, and I felt like they'd really done their homework on this one. They had originally started with an idea of sign toppers, worked with city staff, really reached out to try to find out what was going to be the most um, amenable solution to not only help them establish a neighborhood identity, which they all, the, obviously the applicant themselves felt very strongly about, but to do so in a way that was harmonious and compatible with what the city holds to be the standard based on ordinances and things like that. So I would be in agreement of funding for 5,000. Any other comments? I agree. 5,000 it is. Moving on. Bonanza Village Neighborhood Association beautifica that's beautification of our entry project. Um, oh, it's it says beautician, but it's beautification. <laughs> Don't worry, I knew it was. I was in a hurry. You're fine. Okay. Applicant request of five thousand dollars. Minimum request of four thousand dollars, with an applicant match of six thousand two hundred ninety-two dollars. Member William. Yes, um, I will be personally. Um, I am somewhat biased in this project, but. Um, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I'm driving our. <laughs> uh, You're familiar. So I'm very familiar with this project, and I think this group actually came in and and is putting a lot of their own time, sweat, and equity into this project to do this beautiful, beautiful um, entry interest project. One, they pay their own water bill. They are a neighborhood association, so they don't have any funds. Um, I can tell you, being familiar with the project, is we did a major water uh, or a drainage project on Washington and somehow um, either the city or the, the developer um, broke a water line, they ended up having to pay their own $400 water bill. Um, the neighbors did. We had to work with that to resolve that issue. But they have really um, worked to improve their, their community and this is a hands-on project and I think um, they're worthy of the full amount. Any other comments for or against? Vice Chair Schultz? Yes, Larry Schultz, Ward 6. I totally feel that their presentation was clear, succinct, supportable. They did their homework. They knew what they were doing. And it was very clear that really, to, to short them, less money would not really meet the intent. So I support the full amount requested as well. Any other comments? Uh, we will move forward with the 5,000. Next item, Cedar Neighborhood Association, Cedar Neighborhood Safety Initiative, applicant request of $5,000, a minimum request of $4,700, and an applicant match of $6,120. Comments? For, against? Member Nerero, I'm also really familiar with this neighborhood association. Um, I think some of you remember hearing their, during their presentation that the reason that they're going after kind of becoming an engaged neighborhood and doing more safety upgrades is a member of their neighborhood was um, shot and killed in front of their church um, early morning, 5 a.m., on his way to service. And so that's kind of what got them going um, in this initiative. Um, they also have provided a lot of sweat equity and... Um, I think one of my favorite parts about their project is that they're not going to put a camera up on someone's home unless that person has signed up for Neighborhood Watch and is going to will, willing to participate and be engaged and put in kind of, we give you something, but you also have to put in something for the general good in the general neighborhood. So I'm fully supportive of fully funding them. Any other comments? Uh, no, just, good. Uh, seeing agreement, we're going to move forward with fully funding for 5000 as um, entered into our spreadsheet. Next item is Desert Shores Community Association 30th anniversary celebration. Applicant request of $5,000, minimum request of $4,000, applicant match of $11,990. Memory serves, did we have two members that had to abstain from these items? From this particular item? This Desert Shores, Shores yes. yes. Okay, so the record reflects that Member Quayley and Member Toussaint are going to abstain from this item because of Member Quayley, can you state your I'm the president of Big Joy. Uh, the yes, of course, yes, sir. And My wife's vice president. 
All right, so uh, they will not be participating in the discussion of this item, nor will they be voting on this item. Good um, Being very familiar with Desert Shores and have worked in that community before, Desert Shores to me has been a very outstanding steward of all the funds that they have gotten from the city of Las Vegas for the past, I don't know, five, six, eight, ten years, however long it's been. They do an excellent job at doing their projects, promoting their events. Uh, typically, they've used it for the National Night event, but I think because of this special celebration, I, I know that uh, community engagement is a huge piece of what they do, and to see they, their match is double what they're asking for. Um, I believe uh, they they are in line and, and, and have everything in order to, full, to fully support this, this project. Any other comments for or against? Member Kirk. Uh, <clears throat> they, I scored them fairly high uh, because of their outreach to the community and how many they actually impact. It's over 10,000, I believe, that, from what I recall. So I think it's, it's a good use of funds for that kind of support. Member Nerero, I'm usually uncomfortable funding um, these kinds of projects for HOAs that have dues, you know, generating. But I agree. I think they have been great stewards of past projects and past grants. This is one that I did not fully fund. I did want to fund, but I didn't want to give them the full five thousand. Um, so I, I am comfortable, like whatever you guys move, but it, it was one on my list that I would have um, taken some funds away from. Sure, and Becky, um, I have to agree with both points. I understand that it's an HOA. They are heavily active in their community. They are constantly reaching out. They mm -hmm. are doing a lot to involve their residents. However, also seeing that they did you know, more than double, they are matching not only in volunteer hours, mm -hmm. which are expensive, but also in cash as well. So I feel like funding, you know, the full amount because it is going to reach, as Member Kirk said, around I believe they said 10,000 people, which is a huge impact to any neighborhood mm -hmm. community, and I know that's a huge part of why the city does grants like these. So considering maximum amount of impact, I'd like to full for the fund for the maximum amount. Any other comments for or against? Uh, we're going to move forward with five thousand dollars. I appreciate everyone's comments. Next item is El Community El Camino Community Association, the Provident Community Garden. The applicant requests of five thousand dollars with a minimum request of twenty five hundred dollars and an applicant match of five thousand two hundred and sixty dollars. Any comments? Member Williams. I guess he's I, no, I, I, I would defer to the actual uh, staffer that works in there and then I'll have my comments. Um, <clears throat> member Kilconen, um, I, I, uh, this is a, an interesting association in that it, it includes both um, uh, uh, city residents and, and uh, folks in the unincorporated county. I guess the, the concern that um, I had from their presentation is that um, the neighborhood that they depicted um, on their aerial was that of the, the unincorporated counties as um, being the, the primary <coughs> participants or, or beneficiaries of, of the project. <coughs> and in looking at the, the match, excuse me, I'm losing my voice here. Um, <coughs> um, you know, I, I was surprised that, that they had not applied for um, the, um, for matching funds from um, Clark County's uh, neighborhood small neighborhood grants as well. Um, I don't know. I have, uh, I guess I would have preferred to have seen something that was, you know, within the, uh, although the, the garden itself is within the city limits, I, I guess I would have liked to have seen more demonstration of the city residents' um, involvement in the project from, from that standpoint. Um, I mean, this is a neighborhood partners fund grant is it's not a, a federal or state grant. It's it's funded by City of Las Vegas residents, and um, uh, I'd like to make sure that they're 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 the ones that are are benefiting from the project. So, Member Williams, I, I was uh, in agreement with with everything Anne has, has stated, um, and to the to those points, um, I also see a community <coughs> benefit. So um, I do seek to fund them, and, and I had them funded 
at about three thousand um, dollars just to uh, provide I, I think they have done a great service to the community um, both city and county um, residents um, so that within my suggestion is about three thousand dollars to fund them um, it's a little more than the uh, minimum request um, and a little less than what they, they asked. But when we asked them the question specifically, I remember them stating that if they did get less funding, that just d depends on how much tonnage of dirt or sod that they would be able to bring in. Member Schultz and then Member Tucson. So, um, Member Coponent, so that's what, I, if I heard you correctly, are you saying then that county residents are getting a benefit from this project? And if so, roughly what percentage do you think the project benefits county residents versus city residents? Well, I mean, it's difficult to say based upon their, I mean, I, I'm not sure that we have a, a specific answer to that. The, but the, the, you know, on the aerial that they showed describing the neighborhood, it, it was in the, the, the box that they drew was in the unincorporated county area. Um, which um, kind of caught my attention. So um, that's the. I do know, you know, that there that city residents are, are involved as well. Um, I'm just not too sure to what extent. See, I'm oftentimes asked the question because I'm in the Northwest and we have a close proximity to edges of North Las Vegas, and then people sometimes just don't get it. And they sort of ask from North Las Vegas if they can participate in some of these programs, and I always say. No, this is for the city of Las Vegas. So I, you know, when I hear something like this, it kind of raises a question in my mind. And although I felt they had a good presentation, I liked the project. I feel somewhere between the amount that Member Williams said and some other amount, you know, kind of high up there. But now that I'm hearing this, I, I just sort of need to hear what other people think. Uh, okay, just have a follow up so, though. Um, but, but. Member Kilponen, um, I mean, I, the, the, I do know. That, I mean, the garden itself is within the city. I mean, it's a, it's it's something that's really. I mean, based based on the presentation and based on the application, it seems like it's more of a joint city county project, which is where I was kind of getting at in terms of thinking that it would be good if they tried to receive funding from both. Clark County and the city of Las Vegas to meet their objectives. Um, no, I, I sort of have some, some thoughts and maybe some questions. Um, if I believe this was um, a project for the county, I would say it's been both funded. Yeah. Um, but really, it's a park. park. Parks attract people from all around that location. Usually. So I assume are there homes around in the city around this park? Is part of, uh, is part of the adjoining? Parts of the community is it is it in the city or is it totally isolated from the city? It is there. It's on a on. It's on the boundary line between the city and the county. Right. But it's and a city the, park. It's 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 city. It's within the city limits. Um, the city limit. I, I, I'm yeah. just trying to get the my basically the north north. Uh, east and south sides would be county, the west side. So three sides, the county, one side, the city. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it is designed, this project designed to attract people from the surrounding areas. It does serve the city, but I agree that it doesn't, it's probably not going to get most people from the city. It's probably going to get more people from the county. That's what I was trying to understand is how, how yeah. it's situated. Okay. Okay. I'm happy. Sorry, Chair Sandecki, Member Nerrero, then Member Quayley, then back to Member Williams. Um, Member Nerrero, so El Camino Community Association is obviously located in the city of Las Vegas, mm -hmm. correct? They have a Ken Truman, which is with the Neighborhood Association, and then they have a project leader, which was Keith Thomas. Is he more with the garden? Is that kind of the impression I got from their presentation, that he was more with the garden? Anybody? Nobody? Okay. All right, so I don't know. Uh, sure, I believe Member Nerrero is right. One of them was more directly associated with, with the, the garden. garden. Okay. Um, I mean, it does concern me that we're funding a project in the county and not for our city residents, but the fact is, is I know that a lot of the residents that live near 
these county islands, as we call them, they don't know if they're in the county or in the city, and they all act together and they all work together on projects. And what benefits this little county island is probably going to benefit, right? If, if the point is to get uh, neighbors talking to each other and working together and engaged and um, and working together, I think the project fulfills that that um, that role. And I'm okay with funding it less than the full amount as well. Uh, Member Quayley, uh, great comments. I, I wasn't aware of the county issue with this project, so I, I agree with that. However, that it, it is in the city, and I am familiar with this project um, just through school with my kids and that kind of a thing. And it's an, it's an amazing project mm -hmm. and sustainability and kind of promoting a lot of things that, you know, that we would like to see. And it's open to everybody. So that makes it, to, in my view, too, they're encouraging participation from, from you know, all, uh, you know, so it's, it's not, they're not trying to isolate it or anything like that. It's okay. open to everybody. So um, I, this was one that I also funded a little bit less, not for these reasons, but now that kind of makes sense, too. So I would, I would recommend, I would go with the 3,000 I would be comfortable with. Remember what? Um, and, and Maria has just pretty much said what I wanted to say. Yes. Uh, and so I don't really need to, to add on to that. I just think that we get, and if anybody's watched the city council, you've seen the whole issue about annexation and the city islands and, I mean, the county islands and all those kind of things. One of those conversations I would say we really want to, to dive into. But when you look at city parks, city facilities, it doesn't matter where you come from, you serve. But at the same time, um, back to my original amount suggestion, unless somebody wants uh, to suggest anything less, I think $3,000 at this particular point is is a fair amount. I would support that. I agree with that one. Uh, seeing support for $3,000, could we please enter that in, knowing that it is a city-based community garden that will benefit not only city but also county residents, and we are in favor of being good community partners to all residents of the Vegas Valley. Moving on to item number oh, I'm not counting. eight um, on our Excel spreadsheet. Not only that. Uh, First Twin Lakes Association, Little Library in Lorenzi Park. Applicant requested $2,046 with a minimum request of $3,500. As we had some county issues with this application, and an applicant match of $2,880. Member Williams. I think this is a unique program project. I think it was totally different than anything else that we, we was, was brought to the table. I like the fact that there's really young people involved in this project. Mm -hmm. It's a successful project around the country, and we've uh, taken this initiative uh, citywide as well. I know we do uh, little small libraries with little book stands uh, for several different uh, places within the city. Um, I, I know he has some mathematical um, dollar um, issues, but those have been since fixed based on the um, the the numbers here. So I'm assuming that they did meet with uh, our staff, Elma, and fix those. So um, keep it short and sweet. I think it's an awesome thing that they're they're trying to do here, and I would like to see them funded um, for the full amount. Mr. Schultz. Yes, thank you, Larry Schultz, Ward Six. So um, this was a very compelling presentation. I like the project. I like the people. I like the thought behind it. I like all of it. And I do appreciate the fact that they resubmitted uh, their paperwork because there were the numbers didn't jive. But Alma, help us, please. And I have another point to make after this. When they resubmitted, what amount did they say they wanted? Was it 2880? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at no. the spreadsheet here. That's the hours that they matched. They wanted originally 5,000. Mm -hmm. well, That's the original amount. And then when you guys um, make those comments and wanted them to fix the corrections, he went ahead and changed the amount because the 2,046 is what the cost estimate was for all the. The, that's the items, cash that they need. The supplies that they, they're going to purchase. Okay. So, okay, that's to the do that box. Okay, that's the first point. The second point I have, too, which is, I think, a, a point of uh, formality, but it does need to be addressed. As I recall, the project was to occur in Lorenzi Park. Is that correct? 
Yes. Okay, and then uh, I had asked for some sort of documentation to substantiate that they've received official permission from the stakeholders within the city uh, government to uh, use Lorenzi Park for that. But then when they submitted their documentation, what I saw was it's from one of the senior senators, Darfell? Darfell. Yes. The, uh, and they are working Darfell. on the proper okay. permission. She was just helping him okay. so that you guys would know that she's on they're on the roll on getting the permission. So for, from the proper Yeah. So for the record, as of this meeting today, does this community group have official permission or is this still pending? It's still pending because they you have to go through a couple channels. Yeah. <laughs> so so, <laughs> so I would just conclude my comments by stating then that any award of funds to this organization, and it be noted for the record, is contingent explicitly on receiving final and full authority to place this library in the appropriate park that they wish. So there's no question about that. And then I'll just be quiet. Chair Schultz, if I, uh, Vice Chair Schultz, this is Chair Sandeke, if I may. Um, they did submit a revised attachment, which I did print and included in my backup for today, um, noting that they did fix their volunteer pledge hours to amend the issue that they had with the total neighborhood match. I believe there was some accounting issue. Yeah, um, it was right. a um, community group where I believe English was a second language. There may have been some confusion um, as it was their first time applying for the process. And then on top of that, there was a permission letter that was sent in with a city staff member. And their um, location was, and Durfla is, in, is inside Lorenzi Park as part of the actual location. So I think it goes without saying that should they actually be awarded any funding, that staff would not allow them to move forward unless they have the official permission from not only parks maintenance, but our parks um, department and the parks and recreation working with them before that would happen. So taking the chance that it doesn't go without saying I said it anyway, just to make sure for the record. Thank you. Member Williams. And, and being familiar with that particular park in this particular project, um, they also, I mean, that facility houses one of our youth grants and actually houses the um, Mother Hubbard cover that we provide funding for. So I do not see any issue or any reason why they would not because we do actually house and fund a YMAP project that lives there. So I, I, I agree, but I believe that they will get permission to do so. Mm -hmm. so, Chair so once again, I would suggest that they, based on what our co-chair stated, I should su suggest that they fully fund it $2,046. Uh, Chair Sandecki, knowing that obviously they won't be able to move forward without the location permission, it was brought to their attention late in the game after they already submitted their original application that they not be able to spend funds until they have secured the appropriate amount of permission from the city staff. Uh, it's there, we know they're working on, obviously they've been in contact with staff at the location, they've been in contact with city staff for the grant itself. Um, I think we all, it sounds like, agree with the project being something that would be good for the community. It sounds like they had buy-in from other residents in the area and they are working with city staff. So I agree with moving forward with funding the full amount of request of $2,046. Any other comments on this item? Fantastic. Glen Heather Estates Neighborhood Association, Glen Heather Estates Block Party. Applicant request of $4,500, minimum request of $4,500, with an applicant match of $4,712, and I believe the abstention um, that we had during the last meeting was Member Shelley Walters, who is not here, so we can move forward with comments. Vice Chair Schultz. Yes, this was another presentation that I felt was very compelling, well done, well supported, and uh, they seemed to do a lot of homework and they knew what, what they wanted and it was just something that I think uh, consistent with things this board has proven in the past, so I suggest and recommend that they be funded for the full amount they requested. Member Tuson. Member Tuson. I, I, I agree with Larry. Uh, they really wanted to have parties before and they didn't receive enough funding to do that. And so this year they just wanted to have a party that they would make, would be the party for all the other events that they've done. And they've done a great job in all their previous projects. So I would I would agree uh, to support the full fund, the full amount. Um, <coughs> Member Kilponen, um, I, I do know that they've spent the, the past uh, few years and 
the meetings have mainly, mainly been with NDOT, uh, with Project NEON, and um, they've, they've been directly impacted probably more so than any of the other neighborhoods. Um, uh, and uh, the, I, I, it, 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 to me, um, it seems like a, a party is probably overdue. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good point. Uh, Chair Nikki, I think I remember from the back of the woman who came in to do the presentation mentioned that she herself was involved in party planning and was taking a very active role in it. I feel having that kind of community buying from the applicant and the fact that from everything that Member Tucson and Member Calzone have stated that they're really looking to continue their community engagement. And I feel that is something that, while there were a lot of applications that were similar to this one, you know, allowing them the space to enjoy each other's company is a huge part of building better communities, which is a great um, foundational principle for the city of Las Vegas. And I feel like applies to this grant here. So I would be in favor of moving forward with full funding of their requested amount of $4,500. Any other comments? None. La Mancha of Summerlin, garage door reefer, cleaning, painting, and application of neighborhood watch stairs. Applicant request of $5,000. Minimum request of $4,000 with an applicant match of $4,984. Member Williams, this is one that, great idea. I don't know how much buy-in they're going to get between all the residents participating, they're not participating, how much they're, you know, they're asking for a certain lot, they might only spend 3000 depending on how many people say, yeah, um, we do my garage door. I know it's, it's, it had a lot of question marks in terms of, I love the idea, I think they, they, they are engaged in beautification of their project. This is also one that is also, I believe, a neighborhood association, I mean, a HOA. So, so to a certain extent, I know everyone pays into some type of dues, so I don't know how much their HOA dues plus this, plus how many people who actually want to participate. Just had a lot of question marks to me. Uh, that's just my, 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 my comment. Member Nerero, I agree with Member Williams. Um, I, I actually don't agree that it's a great project, <laughs> although I think that um, while it's probably needed, I think it should be part of just regular maintenance and of part of their, and I don't see how garage doors is going to get people excited about engaging with their neighbors and getting out of their house and talking with each other and working on things together. The only thing that was a saving kind of factor is that, um, that there's a lot of seniors in that community, but I, I just didn't, there was nothing about this project that made me think that it's going to change the neighborhood for the better significantly. Chance Barmentura. Um, I think that Member Nerero's uh, comment uh, is good because my concerns with this project was that the garage doors are private property um, and in the guidelines of the grants it says that we cannot use the funds for personal mm -hmm. use. So that uh, gave flags to me that we, you know if this was some you know a wall, neighborhood walls or community walls or street lights or something where there's graffiti and we're painting over that to better the community that would be one thing but to fix up people's personal property um, I don't think is a good use um, for taxpayer dollars I mean it, as, as far as this grant goes so I agree so what do you want to fund it for or not uh, Chair Sandecki, I remember that the applicant had mentioned something about them also wanting to do sticker put up in the um, in the windows and things like that. Um, I'm looking through the backup to see if there's an amount for how much that was going to, if it was part of their backup, to see how much that would cost them. I'm in favor, of, as it is a senior community that's been mentioned, you know, obviously doing anything that would enhance their safety or their feeling of safety within their community. I'm for funding that, um, as I understand that, you know, as you get older, it is something that becomes more and more of a concern. Um, to letting everyone know that that's something that is important to your community. So I'm going to look for that. Member Holmes? Member Holmes, the uh, Metro is providing the stickers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, maybe a formality, but we, uh, we fund uh, repairs and maintenance on private property all the time. They're HOAs, private property. Um, this is a homeowner. These are homeowners who all have these garage doors and look really bad 
and it would improve the, the appearance of the community, I, I understand from what they said, but it would improve the appearance of the community to have these garage doors painted. So I'm not sure it's quite as cut and dry as we think it is, because every HOA is private property. For the record. Chance Bottom Ventura. Uh, I, I do agree with you. Yes, it is private property, but since it's common interest property, I think that that's the differentiation between a garage door, which isn't part of the common interest community. Um, yeah, they're in the HOA, but the property on the house isn't HOA property. It's you know, it's personal property. It is It is, doesn't have a common interest to the community, and I think that that treads too much along the line of guidelines we already have set forth uh, for grant applications that using it for personal use is not uh, something that we can fund with the grant. So I do think that it's personal use, it's not common interest property, um, and it's it's strictly personal. It has nothing to do with the HOA. Although it looks, you can see it from the HOA common interest street, you, it's personal property. Um, to, to, to kind of put a, a, a amount with it, I know they, they requested 5,000, they said a minimum request of 4,000. I think they're HOA, they collect dues, so I, I would just suggest $2,500 for some of the neighborhood watch stuff, some of the things that they might want to do to, um, I think they want also want to do a little set up a celebration was part of this thing as well. So I think if they can offset um, those costs with whatever they want to do with the garage doors and their HOA dues and all that, $2,500 should be sufficient and then they can decide um, who staff how much they do towards garage doors and how much they do towards the neighborhood watch and their block party get together kind of thing. Um, Chair Sandecki, I'm reading through the NPF guidelines and it does state that while the project here must provide a public neighborhood benefit and must involve neighborhood people in the identifying planning and execution of the proposed activity, um, that projects benefiting an individual or individual property only projects that do not benefit the majority of the neighborhood residents. And while I understand that, yes, it would benefit the overall beautification, it is still the beautification of a single homeowner's home, mm -hmm. which individually increases the value of that particular home. And as I believe they are owned units, it's, and it's not, as Member Bob Ventura said, common interest property, something like a community wall, because we have funded where individual homeowners have had to give their consent to having the back of their public-facing block wall painted. Um, I feel like there is that kind of separation that, yes, it beautified their home, but it was in benefit of the overall community and not an individual maintenance aspect, as Member Nerrero um, stated. Member Williams? Well, I, I thank you for that clarification. I also said um, I, I still go back to, um, I think they asked for some other things, including the party, so between $2,500 to $2,000 is still what I would suggest for them to be able to do the other portion of their projects. Uh, Chair Sandecki, based oh, on the okay. vendor cost estimate sheet that was submitted, the only thing that's on here for them asking for funding towards wow. was the $5,984 to they painting of the paint. garage doors from okay. unforgettable coatings and paintings. Okay. And so that's why I was looking for something else to try oh, to fund okay. for them. But if they're having the neighborhood watch stickers as Member Quigley and Member Holmes mentioned, donated to them from um, the LVMPD that I don't think there's anything on here where we could fund it. They have, they, in their, Member Nerero, they have in their applications, they say that they're going to have a community potluck mm -hmm. to kick off the event, but they don't request funding for it. But maybe that's because they needed all the funding to go towards paint, so. So Larry Schultz, Ward 6, so Personally, based on what I've heard here in the exchange, and I just kind of sat back because I wanted to learn more, and based on the information coming from Member Bonaventura and Member Sandecki, Chair Sandecki, I feel this project now does not qualify for any funding whatsoever. I, am, I would have to change my, I have disposition that's approved, I would now change my disposition to decline based on what I've heard. Chance Farm Ventura. I'd just like to add that it's, uh, you know, we, we would like to fund these folks. They put time and effort into it. Um, but if they want to come back next year with different property or some common interest that they want to improve in the neighborhood, we'll be more than happy to do that. But to give funding for something they didn't put in their application, I think is coming going down a line where mm -hmm. we, we, 
you know, the whole point we have the applications is to make sure that we're detailed and giving money to specific things and to give them a general pot of money to now do whatever they want with, it, I, I don't think that would mm -hmm. be appropriate. I agree. Question for uh, our city attorney. Do you uh, agree with the differentiation of the, of, um, the, the private property owned by an owner versus the private property owned by the association? That it is a different category and therefore it does differentiate. This is not eligible. So the intent, Terry Conichello, the intent of this is exactly as what was expressed by mm -hmm. Chair Jordan Sandiaki. And I, I don't know if Alan can confirm that it was to have community engagement. But <coughs> if all you're seeing in an application is fixing up individual garage doors, and that doesn't culminate in <laughs> a community, I mean, it's community unification, but it doesn't, it's not all there, then that's up for you to decide. Okay. What's the missing link? You know, if there is a missing link, you're just getting new garage doors for individuals. That's the, that's, there's, there's, there's I know, there's I know we've funded them before, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. So. We funded, uh, I think, screen doors for a community of, of older community where they wanted to be able to keep their doors open and yet have it locked. And I know we did fund that project one year. Just, I just, I'm, yeah, not, I'm not trying to change anybody's I'm mind not, here. I, I think yeah. that's more of a policy call. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there's a lot of, I want to say, intended or aspirational goals that, that this fund is to attain and this board is finding that it's missing, then you can make that distinction that you know, believe that this is really benefiting the entire neighborhood, even though it was done in the past. You know, there's other things that we're always done in the past, like maybe it was for security purposes or something. But for that, you know, so you know, taking care of crime for the entire community. You know, this is, from what I understand, it's just good fun doors for houses. But of course, you know. uh, Thank you. Uh, Member Quigley, I just wanted to note on that, that you know in the presentation one of the questions that was asked and I asked was the, about the garage door specifically and getting all the approval and so forth and she clarified that the garage doors are the responsibility of the homeowner where the other aspects of the community are the association. Mm -hmm. So she clarified in that that it's that is the responsibility of the of the homeowner. So I just think it's a, a, they just made an error coming for this particular thing that we want to encourage them, like everybody said, to come back again because I think they, they're, they're, they want to do the right thing and they want to get involved and they want to promote it, so they just need to do it in the right way. Uh, I was, uh, Chair Zanetti, I was just going to say that we're a voting board and we have to have a quorum, which means that we only have to have a majority vote. So you don't have to agree with everyone mm -hmm. on the recommendations. We can be in dissent. Yeah. It just has to find a majority recommendation. So if you'd like to make your comments that you don't agree with what the board is moving forward with, you're more than welcome to vote against any recommendation that we make individually um, or have on record that you don't agree with the majority vote of the board. Because I completely understand wanting to, if there have been other projects that you're aware of that we haven't participated in that discussion that you feel are similar, because um, obviously every voting body is going to handle the information, you know, in the spirit of the information and not necessarily to the letter of what's been done before. So I think um, going back to Member Quigley and Member Bonaventura's points is that while we appreciate the, the hard work and the aspect of coming forward and wanting to do something that betters their community, questions have been posed about common interest pieces versus individual pieces. And then, while we want them to get to know their neighbors and we want them to live in safe and communal environments that they feel proud of, that while we see that they have aspirations, as um, council has mentioned, that maybe they're just not hitting the mark with this one. So while we would welcome them to come back, we don't feel comfortable moving forward with beautifying individual property through this award. Member Neural, just for the sake of playing devil's advocate, <laughs> to make everyone's life harder. Um, you know, I know that during their presentation, and a lot of projects have come forward before this board, beautifying in order to reduce crime and that's a common thing that we've seen in front of this board where you it might just seem like painting a garage door but what they're trying to do is to d display their neighborhood as not run down taken care of that someone does have pride in the neighborhood and and so there is a policy there i mean an effort there by other neighbor other associations just like this 
to maybe beautify um, in order to reduce crime and increase you know, pride in the general neighborhood. So I'll just add that. Question for Council uh, Chair Sandecki. Um, do when we make the motion, is it an overall motion for the amount of recommendations as we've gone through and put on there, or should we take them item by item to identify the recommendations? Do so we have any more recommendations to take them item by item? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that so if there's any conditions that goes with the award, if there's any, if there's no award, if there's no feedback as to why there was no award, you can take them all as a visual mm -hmm. and we'll have Okay, so based on the recommendations that we're, we're hearing, um, if you'd like to make comment regarding any of the item or recommendations if we move forward, when we move forward with the vote, um, to make comment on the item when that comes forward about the recommendation, feel free to do that. Um, at this time, I'm getting from a general sense that uh, we're not in comfortable fully funding this project and funding it at all. Um, but I see Member Williams has a question or a comment. I just have a quick comment. I do notice, uh, and I've heard everyone's comment, um, and just throwing out a suggestion, if they still want to do a potluck, potluck still are free. They still probably need soda, water drinks, or they still need paper plates, whatever they might need. And my suggestion would be even for staff to somehow, if we don't fund them, some type of encouraging letter, something that will have them come back and not just give up on this mm -hmm. process because this is a process that you know maybe they might have another community project that fits for this, so I don't know how we tell people mm -hmm. no, that they didn't get anything, right. but to, I mean, as I've heard everyone speak, you know, maybe they can come back with something better next year, or maybe they have a better idea or something else. So part of me would say, um, is there a way for us to assist with the potluck and then still have them have some kind of community pride and get to know neighbors and bring their stuff together? Because although they didn't ask for it, they did mention a community Get together party, whatever. We're funding plenty of get together parties and so on and so forth, and they're not free. So I was, I would even suggest going down to like five hundred dollars to help out with their potluck. So yeah. I, that's just, I'm just throwing something else. Chair Sandecki, I, I appreciate the sentiment, Member Williams, but again, going back to something the council did say earlier regarding another item that we were trying to overfund is that we have to have documentation to back up what we're funding them for. And while there was um, conjecture or comment or um, write up in a question answer about a potluck like having no determination of how much they plan to they themselves put into the donation for coordinate you know uh, we could go by volunteer hours if that's something that the board would feel comfortable with but again that's not the specific intent of the request itself but remember remember where and I understand that and I also understand that we've had just about every year, every project, no matter what MPF or, or, or whatever the grant projects are, is people amend their projects almost, mm -hmm. some of them have been amended almost totally yep. different from what this board has approved. That's true. But once we give them their money, then they, have it. they amend it and they come back with a whole bunch of things, working with staff to make sure that they can spend the money, make sure they can do a project, even if it wasn't what this board has completely a, approved. And I mean, we can ask staff, but there has not been a single cycle that has not been amended from what this board or any board has said, we're going to give them X amount and they find out that they can't do it that particular way or they have to do something different. That's why they, there's an amendment process. If I'm not That's safe. true. Um, so um, sometimes they, they may get donations and then they don't use that funding for what they intended to use it for, but as long as it's within the, the project, um, the, uh, Hope, then we can we can go ahead and, and it's up to staff to decide whether it's being used properly or not. I do go through all that. I do the paying, so I but they don't get any any money whatsoever. I do take care of all the budget, and so I pay and I make sure everything's in compliance and I do do um, keep up with that. So, so remember, we're, that's why I was stating uh, along the potluck. If we're not going to fund the garage door, and I'm just taking the garage door piece completely out of that if we were going to at least continue to help because it's, it's about community, about getting to know your neighbors, and that's what the potluck is about. Um, I, I think there is a certain degree of cost that go in there that I think the city could even assist. Now, if they chose not to utilize anything for their potluck and they just decided not to do anything with the $250 or the $500, so be it. I mean, it's 500 bucks. Uh, that's just me. So, 
Chair Sandecki, I'm, I'm doing a little math. I pulled up their, I was looking through their volunteer pledge hours, and one of them doesn't list how many, just that they, it's their timeline. Um, I'm pulling up the actual volunteer hours from their pledge sheet um, for anything specifically mentioning just the word party, um, as that I'm assuming is their potluck, um, to which I come to 41 hours, um, which that's 64. So without the paint, they're not going to be doing that project. No, I, under, I understand that, but if the intent is a community get-together or a community if building community, if um, based on Member Williams' comments, that he would prefer to validate them as far as being a community and then allowing them to engage in that level, if it was something that was already a foundational piece of trying to get out to kick it off, instead, if we can, through amendment or through condition, change the um, you know intent of the project to instead of, well, we can't, we don't feel comfortable funding you painting your doors. We do feel comfortable funding you getting out and meeting your neighbors and building community. That maybe we can do that through the list of volunteer hours and then um, moving forward and letting them have at least a community outreach through the potluck that was already part, of, part and parcel from their plan. Right. I, I was just going to say that um, I'm not opposed to this. I just, my point was to point out that this is a sort of a, a new uh, emphasis on this area because we have funded a number of projects in the past and it isn't consistent with the past. It's, it's sort of a mm -hmm. new look at this. I don't have a problem with it. I'm just saying that it is different. No, I completely understand. Uh, member Bonaventura? Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, for the record that I, if they had a budget worksheet that showed like they wanted some money for the potluck, um, and we decided to grant some money for that, that would be okay. But I don't feel comfortable um, granting money, uh, presuming that they're going to use it. You know, granting a certain amount of money, saying they, presuming that they're going to use it for this, that, or that. Um, because I think that that, uh, in my opinion, um, would set, you know, a precedent that we can just, if, if, even if it's not in the project, oh, hey, we'll give them $1,000 for, because we presume they're going to use it for something. I, I just don't think that that's a good precedent. So Remember, I would be against doing that. Member Williams, um, we do that with all these projects and half of some of them don't get done anyway. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we presume that they're going to do all these projects, but if you go down, Elma is fighting with people now trying to get them to spend the money. Yep. And try and say, are you going to do the project? Did you do I, I mean, pretty much we almost as staff got to go out there and do the project for them. And if we don't, their money runs out. We, I don't know how much money she got right now sitting there that they didn't use from last year. Uh, I believe Member Kirk had a comment. Uh, well, I've just been listening to all the comments. And the concern I have is we're speculating on all this. So if we give them a 500, they could still just do two garages for all of them. So <laughs> they haven't explained. So we kind of have to stick with what we, I feel mm -hmm. we have in front of us. And it's speculating is the harm that we're going to do because we can't say that they're going to have a party or not or paint a garage or two because that could be, like I said, one or two garages. So um, I believe so, Vice Chair Schultz had a question. So, and then so you are the board and you guys make the decision, but if you choose to have them do a little get together party, um, then that's what I will make sure that that's what they're going to do. We won't do garage painting because that's not what you chose. Mm -hmm. So you guys make that decision. I will follow up and make sure that what you state that you would like to have done, that's what I'm going to have them okay. do. Okay. Yeah, so I, stepping aside from the details of this specific application, but although this application has brought other matters, for instance, I now understand that there's some degree of discretion utilized by staff to work with homeowners who may not be spending or whatever. And to me, the notion of not spending funds that have been allocated and approved by city council, if they don't spend it, they don't spend it. I don't know why there's a compelling push to spend money if indeed they can't spend it. I think you know there's there should be a notion that, okay, it's not needed, don't spend it. And it goes wherever it goes, and I don't know why we are, you know, driven to spend money that that's not spent by the uh, by the group that approved by this body, which is then presented to city council, and city council then approves it. So to me, there's some sort of part of this that I feel there's a there's a breakdown occurring, and I'll be quiet now. But I, it's just the general sense of what I'm hearing is there's some degree of higher discretion that's occurring that's sort of 
not in line with what's being communicated through the board to the council. And maybe it should be approved, uh, communicated to the council that, oh, by the way, this doesn't always work out the way it is, but we're going to do this and that and the other thing, and let them approve that. Member Williams, I mean, and I think we're taking this way too far because what, what is approved is what staff, staff doesn't give them the money and let them go out. Second of all, each council person a lot of times expect that their wards will have some representation of these funds in their wards to do beautification projects, to do uh, get your neighbors out, to know your neighbors. The money is the neighborhood, neighborhood partnership funds that build on neighborhoods. The staff are not going out there doing willy-nilly whatever somebody comes up with, and it still stays in, within line of what their grant is asked for and what they need to do. Our council offices really push that we bend over backwards to, to really try to make sure that our neighborhoods are beautiful, are clean, are, you know, all these things that these applications are looking for, this is what these funds are being funded for. We're not funding something that is off the rocker. I mean, the staff are, have clear direction from this board once this money is approved for them. And I think that all the projects that are, are approved or amended stays within what we are talking about in terms of the council priorities and needs for each one of our wards. And I, you know, that's why the council makes sure that they have a staff member sitting at this table to make sure that their wards and are, are looked after and these funds are appropriately spent. They're not spent. Chair Sandecki, I, I completely hear what everyone's saying about the spirit of the project versus the letter of the project um, and about wanting to encourage applicants to continue coming back for things that will build communities to make life better. That is the tagline for the city of Las Vegas. Ask a staff member that is employed for the city, we all know what that is. Everything we do is to build community to make life better. So if we can help foster that in neighborhoods, I think that obviously we'll do anything we can to try to lean toward that. Being familiar with the actual grant process um, from a previous YNAP project that I helped um, a youth group with, anything that's submitted has to be accepted by staff and they themselves cannot spend any of the funding. So any of the applicants themselves do not spend the money. The staff spends the money on their behalf. And then receipts are submitted. Receipts are submitted by and through staff for the grant process. So I understand the concern because I had the same one for 30 seconds. And then um, after listening to Alma, remember that they anything that any monies that go out the door are spent by staff. So when we move through to make recommendations for funding, we can put on the condition saying that while we understand that this was the original part of the project, however, we feel like the underlying piece of the project for bettering community, which was the potluck, is what we're choosing to fund and to put on the condition that that's all we'll fund with X number of dollars, which after going through their volunteer sheet, counting up the hours, it was 41 hours at 21 or $24 for volunteer hours for a total of $984 for any volunteer time specifically associated with the potluck itself based on their own backup. So if there are people in favor of moving forward with giving them something to try to do a community event, I would feel comfortable with only moving forward with the $984 because that specifically matches the amount of volunteer hours committed to that party. And that way they could still get out, they could still meet with their neighbors, that would still give them time to you know, build a better community relationship with each other. And then also empower them to come back next year with a project that would be more benefiting or more tolerable to the board at the time. And if they don't want to do a party, Member Nerero, then that money doesn't get given out to them. It stays in the general fund. But I have to agree with Member Williams, you know, if some of these grants don't get completed, you know, Alma gets pressure from councils from council to say, where is it? Where is that neighborhood sign that this neighborhood applied for? So the city has made a policy decision that they would like to fund projects like this and that they would like to put $5,000 in the hands of neighborhood groups. And part of Alma's job is to make sure that the groups follow through and complete the project successfully. So that's why we're here. Chance monitor. Uh, again, I'll just restate my point that you know I don't like to give money on presumptions that aren't there um, for money that they can just spend in a lump sum. But I also like to mention that this money is not going to go away and disappear. 
Um, if the money is reverted into the general fund, it's going to be used for city city issues, whether that's for paying uh, paying an employee or so. It's it's going to benefit the city regardless of where the money goes. We just want to know where the money's going, and by just presuming where you're going to put it and just giving them a lump sum of money, you don't know where it's going to go because the whole reason for the grant application is them stating where is the money going to go. And you say this money's going to go here and this is why we want to give it to them. But by not knowing where it's going to go and just giving it to them, I'm mean, just my opinion. Just my opinion. But we're split, so we should start deciding. We should just vote on this. I, I, I hear what you're saying and I understand it. I, I, I guess my feeling is this. We want to build community. That's the goal. That's the goal of this whole project. Discouraging people isn't the best way to do that, mm -hmm. who really want to improve their community. So I would like the idea of supporting $500 for a potluck. You can presume a potluck. And if they don't have it, the money goes to the general fund, just as you say. Yep. So I don't think it's a problem for this board. It shouldn't be a problem for this board to say, in the hopes that you do have a potluck in your community, we'd be willing to spend $500 on it. That's my view. Member Williams. Member Williams is not going to say anything. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I think our chair really explained it once again. Staff spends the money. Yep. So if they do a potluck or they're going to do, it's not going to be spent until we know they're doing it and she will actually go out and buy the purse and, and items. So none of it's under just the idea of maybe they will. They can't do it unless she pays for it. They will probably submit a purchase request and they give me an itemized list of what I will be paying for. So when I do meet with them, that's exactly what should be in that part. So that's what I can do. Chair, if a uh, chance moment, chair, if I may suggest that we save this and go to the next ones, and when it's brought up for a vote, we can maybe add conditions if that's amenable to everybody, but that we can move on to the next ones. Chair said that okay. I think, based on general feeling from the everyone at the board, that for the time being, we'll put a match of $980. Um, as the recommendation, and that when we move to a vote, we'll put conditions um, amenable to what the spirit of that money is, knowing that staff will be the ones that have to spend that money, and that any documentation showing that that is actually not only where staff spends the money, but then also any backup showing that the event did happen, because they do still have to submit that after the money has been spent. Um, so with $980, because that matches the amount of uh, for backup's sake, that much is the amount of volunteer hours dedicated through their application specifically to anything with the mention of party. So, with that in mind... Thanks for looking up those hours. That's helpful. Happy to help. It's going to work. Um, with that in mind, we are moving on to Las Vegas Meadows. Are we done? Are we moving on? Las Vegas Meadows LTD, uh, project name the Meadows, applicant request of $3,500, minimum request of $3,000 with an applicant match of $9,480. We have Vice Chair Schultz would like to take it off. Okay, so uh, last week this applicant made their presentation and um, it looks like the money is going to be used for security cameras, lights, and monitors. And it sounds like a good idea. However, in listening to the presentation, it appears though, and I'm looking for feedback from my colleagues on the board, that the applicant, and again, it appears as though the applicant is a private, for-profit entity, and then that, to me, and if I'm incorrect, and maybe staff knows better, that to me then says that the uh, assets, the physical assets of the lens cameras and monitors will be owned by a private, for-profit entity, and uh, again, I, I know that's going to help the lives of the residents, but it's also not a neighborhood association, not a voluntary group, a community association. It is a company. And so just feedback from the other members. I mean, did I understand that correct? Or did I, I miss something? That's what I got. Member Kirk, weren't there two, though? There was, were they both from the, there was one woman on the left who spoke like she was a company, and the other woman was a volunteer. So who is the company, who is this organization registered under? Are they registered with the state, as most, I thought, were supposed to be? Um, um, Member Tucson? Mayor. Um, 
But what I heard was that uh, the the one woman who was a member of the community was sort of uh, kind of chairing this idea, and that they employed somehow this company to provide services for them. But it wasn't clear how that happened because it, they had to find funding outside the community to pay for that. That's what I that's what I heard, and it seemed weird to me. I really did. Um, member Kilponen, uh, I mean it. As they described, I mean, it is um, uh, essentially a mobile home park, although there are, they are not homes on wheels. I mean, they are um, homes, some of them that are, that are owned and some people rent within the community. But it is, I guess I'd kind of, I mean, I liken it in, in a way, but not, it's not certainly exact, but like to a condominium where you have some people who are renting, some people who are owning, um, and they don't own the whole property, but they've got their, their units. Um, but yeah, it is a, a mobile home park, so there is that the company that's, that's operating it. But the only thing that really concerns me about this project is that barbed wire sitting around somebody's property. <laughs> and that is alarming to me, just the simple fact that if they're looking at um, security ca cameras, there is a major safety community concern issue there that they had to go to the extent of putting barbed wire around the car. This is senior, this is, I mean, it, it's not even up to code to have barbed wire around the fence like a uh, property like that, which they said they must have done within three or six months of, or uh, ago or something like that. I think they said more maybe, like a maybe couple a, weeks ago. Maybe a couple of <laughs> weeks ago. But I'm just saying that's concerning to me in terms of how we make sure or provide um, safe um, for seniors and, and elderly people or, or whatever the case may be. I don't know what we do in terms of how we fund them or what they're looking for in terms of their cameras and security, but barbed wire around property is not how you need any of us which really want to live. Uh, Member Nerero, so yes, these are mo modular homes, and they, when I ask them, they they pay for a space, like a cost for the space. Um, Ward three has a lot of these, and I know for a fact that a lot of them are low income. The fees are minimal; they barely cover probably cost of water and minimal maintenance. So a lot of these communities have to plan their own engagement and activities and entertainment. A lot of them are seniors, which I know they mentioned that a lot of them were seniors during their presentation. So this was one that I wanted, I was fully supporting to fully fund. Um, yes, they do have a private company that um, manages like the rentals and stuff, but I, it seems to me like they're not, if they're making money, that money isn't trickling down to the residents to make them be engaged and have more activities. I think it's just kind of a, you know, basic services that they're offering the residents. Uh, Member Kilponen, just to provide a, a, a little more background. Um, the, it is a, a, a basically a senior mm. community, and um, the they have had an active. Um, neighborhood watch group for many years and now it's kind of expanded into other seniors helping seniors um, within the community so they have had an active volunteer group there for for many many years um, and just in terms of the location it, it's um, it's over a kind of a Valley View and Penwood so it's kind of adjacent to industrial and other apartments um, in the area so um, so you know it, it has been security has been a concern there for for a while as I say because um, they have worked off and on with Metro and, and have kept eyes on the community but that's just background uh, Chris and Nikki, I remember an application from last year when I sat on the board that was, we've had other instances of apartment type areas that have come forward to mm -hmm. ask for things which are traditionally rental or rent to own or some owner occupied units where we have still moved forward to help them because it has been in the best interest of the community to do so, whether it was funding, I believe, an electrical lighting project um, with an upgrade to LEDs to, to increase safety because the HOA that operated it or the property management company that had been operated it 
um, hadn't done so in good faith and to the benefit of the community. Um, and while we don't fund reserves, we do fund betterment and safety projects for communities. And as Member Williams mentioned, people are living in modular units in what sounds like a more transitional area that they are living in an area that they don't feel safe. I remember that from the comments. There have been instances of people coming over, having homes broken into and not being able to find any recourse, cars being broken into and not being able to find recourse. And that while, yes, I understand the issue of potentially funding a for-profit entity, there have been other instances where for the sake of the community and the safety of the community, um, that we have funded projects in apartment complexes and desert shores and places like that. Um, so for me, moving forward with the safety and the resident dinner, because I believe there was also a comment that was made by one of the presenters that they do a lot with a little. You know, they're constantly funding for free or looking for avenues. Um, the people themselves donate their time, their money, their skill sets, anything that they can to try to create a better place to live in the sense of all of the things that they're dealing with. So I would be in favor with fully funding to allow them to have a resident dinner and some security cameras if it allows them recourse to at least, you know, file an insurance claim to be able to get what was stolen out of their car back or, you know, prevent um, loss of life or limb. Any other comments or anyone in dissent or agreement with moving forward with fully funding? Probably in agreement moving forward with fully funding. It's the first time they've applied and I think that they're, um, I think going forward it will grow with them and I think potentially they'll come back and look for doing some improvements like the replacing the, the, uh, the wire with, with normal. Member Christensen, um, my husband's grandmother used to live there so I'm very familiar with the area and it was a sweet little place when she lived there it was amazing and for me it was sad to see this how it's gone downhill and how they have to, you know, do the barbed wire for safety and stuff. And I, I voted to fully fund this one just because I thought it might uh, help the community come together, um, come together. So, uh. All right, seeing a majority of agreement with fully funding, and we'll take a vote where if you don't feel similarly, you can feel free to express that then. Um, we're going to move on to McNeil Estates Neighborhood Association. Uh, 10th Annual Neighborhood Block Party Community Comes First and McNeil Calming Circle Grand Reveal. Applicant request of $5,000 with a minimum request of $4,500 and an applicant match of $23,400. Vice Chair Schultz. Yes, uh, this was a, I think, uh, a meritorious, well-presented project, but there was something about the numbers. And again, I'm looking to my fellow board members to correct me if I miss I remember this, but I think when I went to the math, I could only support about three thousand dollars in expenditures, and then I think again, if this is the same applicant, when I question the applicant, the applicant says, "Well, yeah, you know, things come up. We're not really sure. We need to have a little ask, ask, ask for extra and all that." And so, to me, having an application that does not support the amount requested would just sort of, well, you know, you, you, things kind of come up. And kind of like that. I, I don't know. I might feel comfortable with that. So, but maybe I mis misremembered this, and I have to rely on the other board members. Maybe they recall it differently than I do. But I remember two thousand. Remember Williams? No, I, I believe you're, you're accurate in the statement, but at the same time, the the, the size of the event um, and depending on what they were able to get donated, whether it be jump house or this kind of stuff, they can move their funds. And that's once again back to that staff discretion on how they actually spend that five thousand dollars. So I think they were, you know, in the past they were able to get this donated, but they had to pay for that. This time they weren't able to get that donated, they paid for this. So that's where that kind of sliding five thousand dollar scale, understanding that their whole project is going to be way more than five thousand dollars to a cost of um, this project. So that's why I think they were undecided where. Some of it may be spent based on what they get and volunteer or what they donate it and what they end up having to pay for it on the side of their day. Member Kirk, um, I would share that's how I kind of understood it as well. There's when you look at their list of 
where their estimates are coming from, there's six or seven things and they're all across the board. So I think they're going to slide a little bit. I anticipate that. And a couple other things. I Again, I like that they have cash, they have in-kind donations, they have a lot of volunteers, so they bring it all together for me for a true community. And so I, I think totally funding this is a recommendation as well. I agree, Member Nero. Uh, Member Tucson, I, I, uh, I, I agree as well. And I would add that I, for many years, was the chair of a committee that did exactly this kind of thing. And what you do is you don't know how much money you're going to have to spend, so you plan it with a, a number of activities you can afford. But if you can afford more, you add some more activities, mm -hmm. typically, is what happens. So I, I think it's so long as we know that all of us want to spend this money on this event, and it may change. You might decide we're not going to have a jumper thing. We're going to have something else. And, and the money's still well spent. And I think that's what that's what they're trying to say. They've also been oh sorry, yeah. they've also been doing it for ten years, so it's not like a new event for them. Yes. Chance Bonaventura. I'm looking at the the uh, invoice that they provided for the cost estimate, and I'm seeing they want a thousand eighty two dollars for four large flower pots and 560 for sandstone boulders. Is that correct? Or? It, uh, Chairs yeah. and Decky, um, I believe it is because there's also the addition of the calming circle yes. that they've added mm -hmm. to the overall project. So they're going to be doing a grand reveal. Um, McNeil Estates, I believe, is located fairly close to City Hall, and it's one of the more historic neighborhoods. And I think in, um, from what I heard, um, I think their presentation got cut a little bit short, so I didn't have a chance to really go into the calming circle portion of it but that they were planning on doing like a reveal of something that really created a community common space inside one of the more historic neighborhoods. Uh, Member Kilponen? Member Kilponen, um, yeah, the, uh, um, you, you are correct. <laughs> the city's putting in like a circle and then they're putting something to beautify that. Yes, circle. irrigation is not an option. They're looking at hardscape like the. the you said the, irrigation, right? No, I said irrigation is okay. not an option. So they are putting in a hardscape, you know, like the pots Chance and the furniture. I, I don't know. I'm asking the board. Maybe they know. Is that like a common price for flower pots? Like $1,000 for four of them? They might I mean, be that giant. Seems, that just seems like traffic. a lot to me. For it, four they might flowers. be large, though. No, not at all. Really? For four? Okay, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about these things. Okay. They're probably big, so they don't look so little. Um, sounds like everyone's fairly in agreement about moving forward with fully funding for a 10th anniversary party for McNeil Estate, so $5,000 on the spreadsheet, if you be. Fantastic. Moving on to Palomino Gardens Homeowners Association for the Palomino Gardens Homeowners Association Street Resurfacing Project. Applicant request of $5,000 with a minimum request of only a dollar <laughs> and an applicant match of $5,820. Floor is open. Um, from listening oh. to the um, audio from the last meeting. This one was a small group of an oval shaped homeowner, um, smaller homeowners association that's voluntary. Um, that they said that the streets had been resurfaced in at least over a decade, but it had been on their list of discussion items since I think 2012. And they were looking at, they were taking the lowest responsive bidder based on recommendations from another member of their board. Um, yeah. Comments? Um, Member Williams, that's pretty much what they want to retake, and I'm assuming these are private streets based on the city not going being able to go in there and do a slurry seal. Mm -hmm. So they were going in, and the lowest bid to slurry seal um, is nowhere near the $5,000. I think this is somewhat to offset. If they weren't able to do that, then they would have to increase their association uh, member or their HOA dues or um, for those seven, eight members that's in that circle. Um, once again, this might be back to the garage door scenario, but you know I think this is, I don't know how much public use to get other than the people that live in the circle. I'm not 100% sure, but I, mean, I think if we do some people do that, we have the money. Member Kelpon, did you have a question or a comment? Um, more of a comment, I guess, Member Kelpon. And I uh, was, uh, I, I did like the fact that they, did present three bids and you know showed the lowest. I, I kind of like the fact that they went a little extra in terms of 
checking out what was around. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I, hopefully this would address the, the concerns they have. It sounds like they have some major issues. Yeah. Um, I just like to agree that um, you know this the street is common property. Everybody mm -hmm. uses it, um, and it, it's only a small portion of the overall cost of. The, the repaving, um, and I think it's a good use to improve the neighborhood and anybody who even comes and visits the neighborhood who's going to be traveling on that street. So, Schultz? Yes, uh, just a couple things. So, Alma, for the record, when we had them present, I asked them about the one dollar minimum. They said, no, that's an error that was forty five hundred dollars. So they orally amended that at the meeting. Okay, but just just for the record, and then the other thing too, for just for the benefit of uh, just refreshing the members. I question the minimum because when I see bids all over the place, I was wondering, but they said that they did their due diligence and they questioned the contractor and they felt, and they had referrals and they knew of the contractor, and they felt that that contractor could really get the job done for $9,287, which quite frankly, that's not a lot of money for that kind of a job. And uh, you know, I thought it was pretty well, you know, if they can get it done for that job, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, Member Kirk, uh, I recall them also the, uh, saying that each homeowner was contributing three hundred dollars. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. so I, I found that a uh, yeah, good value as well yeah. that they're they're putting in their own as well. Yeah. So, okay. uh, I feel sounds like everyone's in agreement with fully funding, so we'll put five thousand and move on to Rainbow Park, uh, Rainbow Family Park Neighborhood Association for the community picnic. Uh, Twenty five hundred dollars requested with a minimum request of fifteen hundred dollars and an applicant match of $3,312. This project seems similar to the one that we just started a few minutes ago. It looks like we have a lot of people, the McNeil Estates one, I think they are doing a, a, a good project for $2,500 and giving the bank out the buck for getting to know their neighbors. So I think $2,500 is a good amount for, for what they're doing. Member Nurea, I agree. Any other comments? I like it, $2,500 on the spreadsheet, please. We get so much more efficient this time. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> um, moving on to Ranch, Rancho Bel Air POA, Rancho Bel Air POA project name. Um, applicant request of five thousand dollars with a minimum request of twenty five hundred dollars and an applicant match of thirty one thousand three hundred and twenty dollars. Um, I believe uh, from the project description, this is a park landscape um, for proposal for tree replacement and decorative rock along Rancho Road. Comments? Member Bonaventura. Chance Bonaventura. Um, I think this was one of my favorite projects uh, just because I thought that it encompassed what the grant should really be doing, which is getting everybody in the community involved. Um, and the money is just there to offset the community engagement that's already there. Um, and they just need the funding to just go that one step further and actually execute whatever plan to benefit the community is. But I think that the major portion is the $31,320 of volunteer hours and just how involved everybody was in getting, it's not really about the rock, it's about the community getting together and and executing it. So I thought that that was good. Member Christensen. I also like this project because I love a project that when you're going along a street, but you know, kind of a well-known busy street that there's improvements to those areas rather than you know all stained walls and I like the entrance that they did last year and stuff so I, I thought it was a good use of their money. Any other comments? Fantastic. $5,000 on board please. Uh, moving on, Rancho Manor Neighborhood Association for the Rancho Manor Entrance Beautification Project. Applicant request of $5,000, minimum request of $5,000, with an applicant match of $6,744. Member Williams. Um, I think this is a, a good applicant for the simple fact that they have continued year-round putting time, effort, and volunteer hours in their neighborhood. They have completely um, probably painted um, over a like, two or three miles worth of block wall um, as a community. Um, I also think that the city of Las Vegas came in and put two monuments on two different instances and kind of left the rest of the neighborhood kind of blank in terms of gateways into their uh, neighborhood. So a big part of the project is to just 
be consistent with the rest of their neighborhood and they're trying to do this on their own. I know the city did uh, one entrance by the Miracle League. If you guys have been down there, it's, it's um, a baseball field for um, disadvantaged, not disadvantaged. Um, disabled? Uh, disabled kids. It's a little miniature baseball field. It looks pretty cool, but that's for one of their entrances. And the other one's on the other side of the medical district. But they also have a couple of entrances coming off a of rancho. So what they're trying to do is pretty much just um, put the monument signs in. I think it's a good, good project. And like I said, they put in hours and hours. The only reason I know that is because I've helped them put in hours and hours of paint, <laughs> block walls, and rolling paint. So beyond their pro project, they are really engaged in the beautification of this neighborhood. And I think this just enhances what they are continuing to work on as a neighborhood. So I would say, fun. Uh, Member Nero and then uh, Member Christensen, if you have time to. Member Nero, I agree, and I also know that they're a fairly new neighborhood association, so it's good to keep their momentum going in the right direction. Right. They, they've been there for a, a, while, a while, and then they fell off, and they've got some new people who moved in. They're really energetic. Right. They've got some folks who moved in from Florida who was also in the neighborhood association, and they're really, they have a web page, they have a Facebook page, awesome. they have a next door, they have a, they're really into it. Uh, sounds like we're in favor of fully funding, especially um, as I believe this was one of the revision applications where they were severely val undervaluing the amount of volunteer efforts that they had. Um, so that they come back and obviously were able to exceed the original match. Um, so $5,000 on the board, please. Moving on to Smoke Ranch Pines Community Beautification Project. Applicant request of $3,695 a minimum request of $3,000, and an applicant match of $3,709. Remember, Williams, I think there's another one that, um, it's another four or five uh, projects, but I was very, it was very interesting for me to find out that the block walls that they were work, working on is not part of the HOA. This is one of the rare HOAs that the block wall is part of the actual I guess homeowners association. Mm -hmm. So if something happened to it, the homeowners association, not the homeowner, was responsible for it. So it looks like this project is something that um, will benefit the entire neighborhood. Plus, I think the city went in there. We've done a major uh, paint job on the cross the street for the other side of the street, and this is just to kind of tie it in and beautify the neighborhood. So it's only three thousand six hundred ninety-five dollars. So I'm in agreement with them. Member Kilponen, uh, the these wall painting projects make a tremendous difference in the community. Mm -hmm. the, there's nothing worse than seeing. I mean, well, I guess graffiti is worse, but you know, close second is the, pa the painted over graffiti. So uh, it, it is nice uh, to see um, folks lo you know, looking to repaint the perimeter walls, and and it does impact the, the entire community, not just the, the homeowners association. Member Christensen. Uh, my experience of, of communities that have done the walls, uh, as you drive by them, you see less and less graffiti on those walls. It's like, it's, it kind of protects it a little bit from what I've noticed. I noticed that there was one done in Ward 5, and on one side, graffiti everywhere, and the part where the wall was all stuccoed and done, not any. So I'm always, always in favor. Sounds like everyone's in agreement for fully funding, so $36.95, please. And moving on to Spanish Oaks HOA for the Spanish Oaks 2018-2019 safety project. Applicant request of $5,000, minimum request of $3,800, and an applicant match of $7,876. Comments, questions, concerns? Mm -hmm. I think I had a concern with this one. Me too. If, if, if this is the one I, and please, if anybody, if anybody can help me on this, I think we asked the question, one of the concerns I had is this association, um, I think this is the correct one, that charges almost $300. Is this the right one to ask? Yes, uh, this is the $300 a quarter, is that what you're No. no that's mm -hmm. For a couple that's hundred dollars a month for their association yes. dues. I recall that too, member. And, uh, before I make my comment, I just wanted to make sure this was that particular application. And I, I understand they have gated and they have guards as you drive through. They have a lot of things that they already have in place for security. They are just trying to enhance some of the security 
um, some of the security cameras that they already have. Um, and if you already have a guard at your gate and some of these things, and you're charging people $200 plus a month. I don't know, I have some kind of issues with that, because I don't know exactly what you might be doing with all that other money, but you have 300 homes, $200 a, a home is quite a bit of money that, that you're collecting as an HOA. Just my own personal. Member Nero, I had concerns too when, um, that I'm not looking at their volunteer hour sheet. I don't have it in front of me. But they, I remember they mentioned that they already do two hours a month volunteer work from their safety committee. So I thought, in my mind, it sounded like the volunteer hours were not, thank you, they were not related to the specific project. They were more related to just hours that they already commit to the committee, which is fine. It just seems like they're not going above and beyond to commit to the project. Yeah, so I'm seeing the sheet. So a uh, member of Bonaventura showed me the sheet, and it says the hours are pledged by the HOA president, the project leader, safety committee chair, and safety committee, safety committee, safety committee member. So it doesn't, it doesn't show anything beyond, I don't know. I don't know if they're putting in volunteer hours beyond just standing on a committee that already exists and already meets. Does anybody have recommendations for how they've been funded then? Finding that they already have 24 hours, uh, sorry. Maybe 30. their minimum request, member Nero, of 3,800? I think that's mm -hmm. it. Member Foley, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Is that a general consensus and acknowledge? Gee, that's never happened to me. Fantastic. $3,800 report, please. And then moving on to the locked application for consideration, West Woodland Hills Twin Lakes Community Group for a neighborhood watch crime prevention project. Uh, applicant request of $5,000, minimum request of $5,000 with an applicant match of $14,758. Member Williams, I think this was one of, uh, this was an awesome presentation. I think they actually came with examples of how these cameras can actually benefit, and this is one, this is a neighborhood association, not a HOA. So this is some this is security that they've been working with Metro. They actually said they've been going to the first Tuesday. They've been able to present the video as evidence. They've actually showed you exactly um, how it would uh, help their community, how they've used it in the past, um, and how it would benefit if they can add more cameras to this particular community. This is not a gated community, it's just a, you know, come and go as you please, and um, in this day and time, people are finding ways and trying to figure out ways to, to make themselves feel a lot safer in the neighborhood, and I think this is an awesome project, and they've put in a lot of volunteer work to get the best prices that they can find for these particular camps. So, I would say it's $5,000. Good. Thanks, Trishel. I second everything that Member Williams just said, because that's exactly how I feel. Change oh, <laughs> uh, Ventura, and maybe the board can help. Uh, my question was, what the? I remember them saying something about the the poles that they were putting the cameras on. Mm -hmm. um, is that part of the association? Like, are the poles? Is it a city pole? Or what? Do we know? The association. Yeah. Because I know they're a neighborhood association. They're a neighborhood they're association, so everything that they have to do, they have to do on their own. So their poles or whatever they can put on is either something that people can volunteer and put in their, their own yards or they're going to have to put there, or it's something that um, they have to attach to. So the neighborhood association uh, is uh, responsible for the maintenance of the poles and the, the streets? The individual, um, I believe this was one where the individual homeowners have been contacted, permission letters have been received. Um, about putting them in individual homeowner yards yeah. with I, the... I think the reason why I asked is I just don't... If it's a public street pole, I don't want them to... No, no, no. They were going to no, no, install no. new poles. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're installing be, yeah, new they're poles. They're installing new poles right. that are then going to be tied in, okay. I believe. Right. And they have like a little SIM card where they can pull the... Uh, get the, the information from if they so need it. If somebody's car got broken in or something, they can pull that and they can get back to Metro... And work off the And it says that they're partnering with the Vegas Safety Cam program in there. Right, right. I think they, they, they've done their homework on this. So that was so the Everyone in support of this. fully funding. We've got $5,000 on the board. Who's ready to make motions? We're going to go through them individually, as I know that there was some dissent on some items. Do we be able to take 
individual votes and add conditions as needed for each of the individual projects. Member Williams. Um, Board, can you, can you um, kind of give us an overview of where we're at and how much we have and how much? I know, I just wanted to put it on the record. I know it's right there, but it got to be put on the record at some point. <laughs> the record don't know it's right there. <laughs> so if you can just make right a statement. There, right, right there, on the record, right there. Wait. I know. Chair Sandecki, yes. from the spreadsheet, based on the recommendations that we're moving forward, making motions on while we had $80,000 to spend toward projects based on merit and discussion, vigorous discussion in some cases, um, we have so far recommended to a lot $75,191, which I feel is still nothing to sneeze at. So with that in mind, we are going to go through these item by item um, with allotment for amendments and comment on the record should someone feel necessary to do that regarding an item. Can I suggest them for yeah. I'm going to go into Zoom grants. Oh, and necessary extensions. I'm sorry, Alma. I'm going to Zoom grants to actually put in there the amount that you request that we'll go down the list. Okay. Uh -huh. I have it written. Yeah, do you? Okay. Yeah. All right. So that way it's done. Um, so I will need someone to make motions and to make seconds. So I need someone to make motions. For the full amount? Are we are we going to review no, one more time? One at a time. Yeah. So I need an individual motion for and, and a discussion. Our co chair can make their motion. No, I'm good. I stepped out for a minute. I didn't write down some of them. You have them there? Thank you. Okay. So we'll go one by one? Yeah. Okay. So the first one. Can we take a little break? No. Would we like a five second recess while she tries to. Yeah. Yep. All right. Five second or five minute recess. No, no, no. I gotta go. I got I got um all American cities to go. Okay, so just an announcement. The city clerk is gonna leave this recording because it's gonna be a short recess. So I got I got five five four thirty, I got six. Okay. I'm in recess. I'm in recess. Okay, I'm in recess. I'm like, <laughs> 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 neither did I. <laughs> 